turns out that when he made my application to purchase a, a gun, what happened was he stayed, I guess you had get asked, I don't guess, you get asked the question, are you on drugs, you use drugs? He said no. And he wrote about saying no in right. his book. CNN's Paula Reed starts off our coverage today with a look at what will happen next before this deal is final. President Biden's son, Hunter, reaches an agreement with the Justice Department to resolve a long-running criminal investigation. According to a letter filed Tuesday by federal prosecutors, Hunter will plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges and struck a deal to resolve a separate felony gun charge if he complies with his end of the plea agreement. According to court documents, Biden owed at least $100,000 in federal taxes for 2017 and at least $100,000 for 2018, but did not pay the IRS by the deadline. His lawyers say he eventually paid the tax bill along with fees and penalties. As part of this deal, the Justice Department has agreed to recommend a sentence of probation for the tax charges, according to sources, but the final punishment will be up to the judge. On the gun charge, prosecutors allege he possessed a gun despite his addiction in violation of federal law. Biden's lawyers met with the Justice Department in April, and sources tell CNN that negotiations to resolve the case have ramped up in recent weeks. The deal comes after a broad, years-long investigation that also looked at Hunter Biden's foreign deals and possible money laundering. On Capitol Hill, Republicans have been focused on the president's son and his foreign business dealings, but prosecutors haven't charged him on those claims. On Tuesday, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy criticized Hunter's deal. It continues to show the two-tier system in America. If you are the president's leading political opponent, the DOJ tries to literally put you in jail and give you prison time. If you are the president's son, you get a sweetheart deal. Former President Donald Trump posting on Truth Social this morning, wow, the corrupt Biden DOJ just cleared up hundreds of years of criminal liability by giving Hunter Biden a mere traffic ticket. Our system is broken. The Hunter Biden investigation has been overseen by Trump-appointed U.S. Attorney David Weiss. <laughs> President Biden has repeatedly defended his son amid the ongoing investigation. He's established a new life. I'm confident that he is what he says and does are consistent with what happens. For example, he wrote a book about his problems and was straightforward about it. I'm proud of him. Moments ago, Biden's lawyer weighed in on the investigation, calling it dogged but fair. Let's take a listen. This was a five year, very diligent investigation pursued by incredibly professional prosecutors, um, some of whom have been career prosecutors, one of whom at least was appointed by President Trump. They were very diligent, very dogged. Um, this was, you know, it took five years, and it was five years of work that they put in, um, and even throughout working out the ultimate resolution, I think that they were always driving for what they thought was fair. We're still waiting for a hearing date to be set, for Hunter Biden to be arraigned and plead guilty. We expect that'll happen in the coming weeks. Jake. All right, Paula Reed, thanks so much. Let's bring in CNN senior legal analyst, Ellie Honig. Ellie, I'm not a lawyer. I have no idea if this plea case, uh, this plea agreement comports with what would happen for the normal person or uh, as Republicans are today insinuating, uh, this is a sweetheart deal. Um, you're a former federal prosecutor. Tell us, is, is this uh, what anybody would get in a similar circumstance, or is this a sweetheart deal? Well, Jake, I think, first of all, nobody's really in position to know that because we don't know the entirety, what the whole universe was of what DOJ had. If they had evidence of more serious crimes and they failed to follow up or they gave Hunter Biden substantially lesser charges, then yes, it's a sweetheart deal. But if this is all they had that was federally criminally chargeable, then no, it's not a sweetheart deal. Now, just to give you one example, a lot of this is a matter of perspective. If we look at the gun charge here, it is exceedingly rare for somebody to be, to be charged with a federal gun crime and given pretrial diversion as Hunter Biden has been given, meaning he doesn't even have to plead guilty. As long as he behaves himself, the charge will go away. On the other hand, 
the vast majority of federal gun crimes involve somebody who either used the gun in some sort of violent crime or somebody who's a prior convicted felon. So it's rare to even see anyone prosecuted at all under the law that Hunter Biden was prosecuted for, which is possession of a gun by an addict. So it's really largely a product of perspective here. The lawyer for Hunter Biden said the case is now, quote, resolved, but the U.S. attorney, uh, David Weiss, appointed by Trump, says it's ongoing. So clear that up for us. How does that make sense? In any plea deal like this, it is absolutely the understanding between both parties that this is it, that there will not be further charges based on what DOJ knows now. I suspect when we see the paperwork, it will say something to that effect. So why is DOJ saying it's ongoing? Because DOJ always says that until the jury comes back, until the appeal is over, because you never know if something new could pop up. But that's sort of general, very commonplace DOJ language. I do not expect there to be additional charges. All right. I I am just asking this question. There is no evidence that he intends to do this. But could President Biden, if he wanted to, pardon Hunter? Uh, And is there any precedent for such an action? So absolutely. The president, Joe Biden, has authority to pardon Hunter Biden uh, or anyone else, really. Uh, Of course, I don't expect that that's likely to happen certainly before the election. There is precedent for this, actually, Jake. Bill Clinton famously or infamously pardoned his half-brother, Roger Clinton, on his final day in office. Roger Clinton, years before, had been convicted uh, of a drug offense. And depending on how broadly you want to define family, Donald Trump, on his last day in office, pardoned Charles Kushner, who was the father of Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner. So there is precedent for presidents to pardon family members or sort of more distant family members. Yeah. And the U.S. attorney who went after Charles Kushner, Chris Chris Christie, Christie, as you know, Ellie (laughs) Honeg. Thank you so much. Let's get the latest from both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue now. CNN's Manu Raj is on Capitol Hill. CNN's Jeremy Diamond is at the White House. Manu, you just caught up with some senior members uh, of the Republican Party. Uh, What did they have to say? Yeah, House Oversight Chairman James Comer just told me moments ago that the, that is one of the big questions that he has is what does it mean when the Justice Department's um, investigation is ongoing because he's trying to seek a number of records into this case. Now, he also is indicating that House Republicans plan to call the, the U.S. attorney in this case, David Weiss. There's some discussion ongoing about bringing him in to testify. And he also downplayed the notion that it, this was, in fact, a Trump-backed attorney who is held over for, into the Biden administration that led Led this effort into Hunter Biden. Now, when I spoke, caught up with Speaker McCarthy earlier today, he tried to compare the Hunter Biden case with the case involving former President Donald Trump, even though the two cases are much different and the facts are different as well. David Weiss is the Trump appointed attorney. Do you not have confidence in him? No, the, the, the question I have, you want equal justice in America. Mm-hmm. It just seems to me that if you are the leading opponent of the president, you're going to get jail time. But if you're the son of the president, you don't get any jail time. See, there's two separate cases. Yeah, I, I, Why I, conflate them? I, I'm not conflating them. But they're alleging so he lied we, to investigators. We, that's we, that's we the issue. You handle it different. Well, did, did Hunter Biden lie about his taxes? Did Hunter, lie, Hunter Biden lie about the gun? Well, I don't know. He pleaded guilty to the okay. situation, well, to those tax situations. Well, there's no, there's no time for him to serve. Remember, there will be no prison time, but they're trying to put President Trump in prison. That's what they're different about. cases. They're you different talk facts. About equal, equal justice here, and that's the problem most Americans have. Uh, Speaker McCarthy also said today that he believes the result of this plea deal will, quote, enhance the House GOP investigation into Hunter Biden and to Joe Biden, trying to link the two, trying to link business deals that happen overseas with the White House directly and with Joe Biden's actions as vice president. The question will be, what will happen if the Justice Department does not provide those records that they are now going to be seeking in the aftermath of this plea deal? So, Comer indic- indicating to me moments ago he has not made a decision whether to sup- subpoena for those records, but they do plan to at least potentially call for that U.S. attorney to come testify before one of the House committees, Jay. U.S. attorney appointed by Donald Trump and Joe Biden kept him in office because of the obvious conflict of interest because he was investigating his son. I saw Speaker McCarthy didn't address that part of your question there, Manu. Yeah. Um, Jeremy, this short statement from the White House today is really emblematic of how President Biden has handled the controversy uh, around Hunter. 
Yeah, that's right, Jake. President Biden really hasn't sought to distance himself from his son publicly at all. In fact, he's done quite the opposite, really embracing him. We have seen Hunter Biden at the president's side at public events uh, repeatedly, most notably uh, perhaps in April when uh, Hunter Biden joined the president on his trip to Ireland. He was a near constant presence at the president's side. And so it's no surprise when we see this statement from the White House uh, focusing on the fact that the president and the first lady love their son uh, and ultimately saying that other than that, they have no further comment. We know that the president and the first lady in talking about this previously, as uh, the president did to you, Jake, talking about uh, the fact that they're proud of their son for overcoming his struggles with addiction. The president recently said in an interview that he didn't believe that his son has done anything wrong. Of course, Hunter Biden in this guilty plea is indeed admitting to wrongdoing. But uh, look, this is not something that ultimately came as a total surprise to the White House. And that's because I'm told that the White House and the president's personal attorney, Bob Bauer, they have kept an open line of communication with Hunter Biden's attorneys throughout this process. Uh, and that that is a line of communication that's been open on both ends. That being said, a senior Biden advisor told me that, look, uh, they are not directing or advising Hunter Biden's legal team. They were not doing that throughout this process. L President Biden, for his part, he is currently on the West Coast in California. He's about to start a meeting with AI experts. This will be the first opportunity for reporters to try and shout questions at the president. We will see if he decides to answer any of those.